Well, happy Friday, everybody. Looks like you have almost survived another week. <laughs> uh, dare I say that so publicly when uh, we still have another day before the week is over. So, you know, be on your guard. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, I wanted to share with you just, um, I think, some things that we're all kind of dealing with. Um, C.S. Lewis wrote this. He said, If we find ourselves with the desire that nothing in this world can satisfy the most probable explanation is that we were made for another world. There, there's some things that, that this life, we just we just can't, we just won't find satisfaction. Do, do you ever feel like you don't belong? Do you ever feel lonely? Do you ever feel like you don't fit in anywhere? Do you ever feel like maybe maybe like you're looking for something that you just can't find or maybe it doesn't even, maybe it doesn't even exist? See, I think that, I think that God anticipated us feeling like that. And I think that um, there's, well, I think there's many reasons why we feel like that. But in John 14, verses 2 through 3, Jesus said this, In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I'm going away to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and welcome you into my presence so that you also may be where I am. And the idea here that I get from this verse is that we do have a place with God. Um, and and that I, kind of the idea that, that we always we always belong with God. We'll, we'll always fit in with God. It's not like um, God's just one of those people who's like secretly judging us but smiling on the outside. You know what I mean? Or one of those people where no matter what you do, you know, it's just not good enough for them. Or, or maybe maybe someone who um, you know you just maybe you just don't like it when they come in. Like, as soon as they enter in the room, you're just like, ugh, it's them. God doesn't, God doesn't feel like that towards us. God, God loves us. And it's not one of those loves that, you know, when we, when we mess up, he says, you know what, I'm just tired of dealing with you. It, it's not, it's not like that. God's love is like, when, it's like when somebody walks in the room and you're genuinely happy that they're, that they're there. And, you you know you you go out of the, out of your way just let them know hey thank you so much for coming and you know that kind of stuff it, it's, it's kind of like what it is um, when we when we draw near to God it, it's something that He's waiting for us to do um, we always belong with God um, in, in God's presence we we can know we can feel and, and know and experience belonging and comfort and peace see sometimes what we try and do is we try to do something like this well I'll read the Bible so try I can cr try and hear from God right but then we're not really paying attention while we're reading it we're just kind of Going through the words that we can say we did it, or maybe we're just doing it out of rote memory, like just okay, whatever. I'm, I'm, I'm. This is what I'm doing now. I'm not, I'm not into it. I'm not trying to learn. I, I haven't come to draw near to God to, to have God speak to me. I'm just reading a couple words so I can move on with my day. Um, more often than not, though, we kind of just leave the Bible there. You know, I'm sure that it has great things to say. Maybe I'll get around to it someday. Or maybe you go the other way and you just say, you know what, that book just doesn't really have anything to say to me today. And so, for whatever reason, you know, it sits there, and it doesn't get read. And as a result, we just kind of have this this lack of truly encountering um, God, and truly encountering something that, that could be life-changing. And um, another example is uh, praying, but while we're praying, we're spending the whole time worrying about this or that or the other thing. Uh, we're, we're worrying about this or that or the other thing. You know, uh, we're not really presenting our, our request to God. We're just sitting there basically voicing our concerns or complaining to God. Um, not really expecting God to hear or do anything. Just kind of, you know, um, letting God know how we feel or think about something. It's like, you know, God kind of already knows how we feel and think about something. I'm not saying you shouldn't, you shouldn't, you know, be real with God, but Prayer has to be more than just nitpicking. It has to be more than just these are all the things that are going wrong. It has to be, it has to involve intercession, standing for something, um, asking God for something, uh, believing in faith. Lord, please uh, help. Help. Like like in 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 uh, the Gospels, there's this part where, you know, um, there's this guy that says, "Lord, I believe, but please help my unbelief." You know that element of yeah, I do believe. I, I am trying. I, I'm 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 really struggling with this, but I am trying. Versus, you know, please help me through this. Um, sometimes we try to live life without God, uh, without obeying Him, without trying to know Him better, 
uh, without without really wanting to experience him more in our lives. We don't really go to him with the idea of, Lord, I, I want to be changed. I, I want I want something that I'm not getting in my regular life. We, we go to it kind of with this idea instead of, you know, if I go through the motions, then I'm going to experience. If I just go to church on Sunday or whatever. So as a result, we kind of get this empty feeling in our, in our hearts that, that we carry with us throughout the days. And we don't ever really find that peace that we're looking for. And um, it just kind of is a rough place to be in. Um, but just a, a few last ideas here. If, if no one ever understands you or no one ever accepts you or maybe you feel like, you know, I'm just doomed to be lonely, you know, forever alone. You used to hear that a lot. Um, remember that God does still accept you. God still does understand you. And then, you know, maybe you're saying, well, life is just so pointless. I don't even know why I try. It's it's not pointless if you're living for God. There's just, God has a way where he can just change your perspective on that. And just because your perspective right now is life is pointless doesn't mean that it actually is. Just because you're feeling a certain way right now doesn't mean that that, that that's actually how it is. Um... <sighs> Things like things like suicide and things like depression, they're, they're things that come for everybody to different degrees. And you can't make the decision, make the mistake of, of making a, a decision based on, on those feelings. Um, there has to be um, there has to be a point where you just kind of stop and, and say, God, I, I just I just need you. And you just focus on, on him and on what he's done and who he is. And just you know, stay reading in your words, reading in the Bible, stay praying, and, and you'll find that you get um, rejuvenated. Um, it's your your inside, your your spirit, your heart. It gets um, changed. It gets um, encouraged. It gets where no matter how tired and, and, and dirty you were, you become clean and, and new. And but it's something that that if you really if you really want it, it's there, but you have to you have to actually pursue it. It's it's one of those things where you can't just stumble your way through it and, and you know, oh well, you know, if God wants me to have it, he'll give it to me. Well, God wants to have a relationship with you and he wants, you know, that to build. And I know that over the past couple of months it's kinda of been a little bit difficult. We we get we've gotten into new ruts, um, we've gotten kind of discouraged about losing the old ruts, um, kind of in a place of, of maybe hopelessness or just despair, anxiety, depression, all these different things. But through it all, God God still is still, he's still there and he's, he's still wanting us to grow. And I know some people aren't comfortable with going to church in person right now. I get that. But that doesn't mean that you have to be, you have to maintain social distancing from God. You know, um, God's, God's not going to get the virus from you. I mean, you can go however close to him as you want. And it's something, no matter whether you are afraid of the virus, whether you're cautious, whether you are angry about the situation, whatever, um, God is always there for when we call on him. And uh, But it's kind of like soap. You actually got to gotta use it for it to work. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, oh, well, I, I, I know God, yeah, but you don't, you don't talk to him. So it's just kind of something that you really have to experience to really get the full benefits of. Um, and I'm just going to end with this quote. It's been on our bulletin for forever. It says, Life is never hopeless. No person is beyond forgiveness. No fear is too great. No relationship is too broken. No addiction is too strong. No loneliness is too overwhelming. There is nothing too hard for God. And I think all the more we need to know something like that. Because here's the thing. It doesn't matter if things go back to normal or they don't. What matters is that God is is ready. He's there and he's ready. When, 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 when you seek him, when you cry out to him, you'll always find him. He'll be right there. And uh, I really just want to encourage you to, you know, maybe less listen more to the Bible than you do to the news. If you watch the news for five minutes, read the Bible for ten. Um, maybe spend more time praying to God, asking, interceding, um, you know, trying to um, get on the same page as God than complaining about your problems to your friends. Maybe spend more time with people than alone with your thoughts. So I, I hope that this was encouraging for you. I hope that it kind of gave you something to think about. 
Um, and uh, okay, so have a great weekend, and I hope to see you on Sunday.